Hi, this is your Hurricane Tracker video update for Hurricane Irene, recorded August 23rd, 2011, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, we have Category 2 Hurricane Irene just north of Hispaniola late this morning, moving to the west-northwest. And you can see by the purple dots later tonight, early Wednesday morning, Irene's forecasted to become a major Category 3 hurricane, and then forecasted to briefly become a Category 4 system just a few hundred miles east of the Florida Peninsula. Now this morning, Hurricane Irene is looking very healthy on satellite. Has a uh, very nice classic look to it. Great outflow in all quadrants. It is a healthy system and it's a system that is poised to strengthen pretty rapidly as we get into this evening and into the next uh, day or two. Over the short term, she'll be moving to the west-northwest near the Turks and Caicos Islands and then up into the southeastern Bahamas. If you live in these islands here in the southeastern Bahamas, please take immediate action uh, to protect your life and your property and listen to all information that your local government provides regarding evacuations and storm information. The latest track issued this morning by the National Hurricane Center, again, shows her becoming a major hurricane uh, early Wednesday morning. And then making more of a turn to the north-northwest through the northern Bahamas where hurricane watches are in effect. And then eventually turning to the north in response to a weakness in the atmosphere, turning north towards the southwest North Carolina coast. What I want you to take from this graphic, and so does the Hurricane Center, never focus on one single point of the track as this is a large storm and focus on the cone of uncertainty. So if you live anywhere in this cone, you are still within the realm of possibility of a landfall from Hurricane Irene. Florida, you can breathe a little easier this morning. As I'll show you in a minute, the computer models are in much better agreement that it will miss you to the east and push north into the Carolinas. But any slight westward shift or wobble uh, could bring the center a little bit closer to, the storm, to this uh, coastline. And because Irene is going to be such a, a huge hurricane, Tropical storm force winds will extend several hundred miles in all directions, and I'll show you in just a minute just how close uh, those could be. One of the main ingredients as to why Irene will become a major hurricane is due to the very warm waters here uh, through the Bahamas and up the Gulf Stream. Water temperatures are way above the threshold what's required for tropical storms to and hurricanes to maintain themselves as well as uh, the environment above the system in the upper atmosphere, looks like near-perfect conditions for this system to become a Category 4 in this location, just off of East Florida, and then weak into a Category 3 as she pushes up into the Carolinas. But there is still a possibility she remains a Category 4 as she, right before she makes landfall, so please keep that in mind if you live in South or North Carolina. As I mentioned last night, the computer model runs came into excellent agreement. This is about as good as it gets, folks. There are no computer models uh, showing a landfall over Florida. They all make a bend to the north-northwest, to the north, and then off to the northeast. Right now, most computer models uh, show Irene clipping North Carolina and then moving northeast back out over the open water, getting very close to Cape Cod uh, early next week. And some computer models bring her up into New England towards uh, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City. So that will have to be watched very closely as to uh, if she will be headed to the Northeast. Obviously, that would impact millions of people and will definitely keep you updated as to that possibility. But right now, Florida, again, you can breathe a little easier, but you can't completely let, let your guard down because the National Hurricane Center still has uh, eastern Florida about a 30 to 50 percent chance of receiving tropical storm force winds because they do extend out very far from the center. Now the green area is a tropical storm force winds of 39 miles an hour or greater. On the current track, tropical storm force winds could be brushing the beaches of eastern Florida. So again, any slight westward shift in the track, any uh, westward wobble could put uh, eastern Florida north of uh, the Miami area under tropical storm force wind conditions. For the Miami Metro, I think right now you'll just see some gusty winds, 20, 25 miles an hour, uh, partly sunny, partly cloudy with a few thunderstorms. But again, you're still just on the edge of the cone 
that the National Hurricane Center has released. So again, please do not completely let your guard down. Still have your supplies ready in case Irene does not follow the forecast. So who would be a greatest threat as of the current track? Well, right now, this red shaded area would be the area of most extreme damage from a major hurricane. The potential in this red area is there for extreme to extensive damage. A 10 to 18 foot storm surge, especially on the right side of the storm, from Myrtle Grove up to Moorhead City, North Carolina. This region would experience uh, winds of at least 90 miles an hour. And right around the center, within about 20 miles, there would be winds of 110 miles an hour or more that would push directly over the Wilmington area, up through uh, Goldsboro, and just to the east of the Raleigh metro area. So any, anyone on the coast from Myrtle Beach up to Moorhead City, North Carolina, right now, based on the latest NHC track, you're at greatest risk of extreme to extensive damage. Please take this storm seriously. Listen to local authorities. Do everything you can to protect your property and your life. Have plenty of supplies on hand to last you several days. As uh, it's very likely food, water, and electricity could be disrupted for weeks. And uh, you just want to make sure you're prepared. Have a plan in place to move inland if you're ordered to evacuate. Obviously, as this storm moves inland, it will weaken. But because it's going to hit the coast at such a high intensity, it's going to take a few hundred miles really for the storm to weaken uh, to a Category 1 storm. So the Raleigh-Durham area, you are under a great threat of receiving hurricane force winds for several hours and, of course, flooding rains that come with tropical cyclones. I want to leave you today with uh, one of the best models that we had, the ECMWF. It's run from late last night. Just want to put this into motion and just let you see what it's showing. Showing Irene moving up through the Bahamas, making the northerly turn as a very strong system just off the eastern coast of Florida and up into uh, the northeastern United States. And you can just see how close she gets to Florida, into North Carolina, right up over Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City as possibly a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. If she's able to get back out over open water, she could make a second landfall near Long Island or uh, up through uh, Rhode Island or Massachusetts. So again, we're going to pay close attention to that possibility. We'll keep you updated if you live up in the Northeast. We'd like to see more computer model runs and get more data before we really say how much of an, uh, how much of an, of an impact and what uh, specific threats could be uh, possible up there in the Northeast. We'll try to be back with another video update tomorrow afternoon. Of course, we're posting audio updates on Hurricane Irene uh, every morning and every afternoon based on the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Thanks so much for watching and, and for your time and most importantly for using Hurricane Tracker. We hope you find this app very valuable and we're going to do everything, our, everything we can in our uh, power to keep you as, as fully updated as possible. Thanks so much everyone. Have a great day.